Hi guys, welcome to Elevation TV Network. You hear the praise and worship? It's Saturday, right? Have to get you some praise and worship music, and I got you some. <laughs> the music is by Corinne Brown. She is a gospel artist, and the song is just beautiful. So I wanted you guys to hear it. So just listen to it for a few minutes, a few about a minute. Just enjoy it. I'll be right back. It's called The Sun Will Shine Again. That's the title of it. I love that song, guys. So how are you guys doing today? Let me hear the first one again. How are you guys doing? Happy Saturday. I'm so excited to be on, especially with this kind of week when everything's going on in the world. I'm just happy to be on because the gifted just bring us life, <laughs> just new motivation and just a new elevation, you know, so I'm just so excited to be on today. So welcome to the gifted. I am your host, Shani Salmon Godfrey. Guys, we are here every week, every Saturday, every Sunday, just to help you to grow, to help you elevate. The Gifted was developed for just to teach people the different parts to ministry and just to teach them how to elevate and use their God-given gifts and talent. Not everybody had the same gift and talent, but guess what? We're all gifted and talented in our own way. So we are here twice a week, every week, just to help you push, to help you grow, to help you truly elevate. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. And we have a man of God. Yes, a man of God. <laughs> I always get excited when we have men of God because, you know, it's not that many of them that's easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> they're not easy to find, but trust me, they're working. They're on the wall too. They are on the wall too. So God bless them. He's going to come on and he's just going to bless us. So I'm going to bring him on and we're going to get this thing started because you guys know I get excited. I get so excited. So welcome, 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 welcome. Let me bring him on. I'm excited. Good, y'all. Well, it's always good. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. So welcome, 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 welcome. Hi, Pastor Butler. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. See, I'm over here all excited. I'm just, I'm excited. <laughs> so Me too. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I tell them anytime the men of God come on and just pour into us, it's a difference, you know? And <laughs> we don't have a lot of those. We have a lot more women. So I thank God that you're here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the invite. I'm I know, so it's honored. It's really going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> so guys. We are going to pray because we start with God and we end with God. We are going to pray and then Pastor Blutter is going to introduce himself and then we're going to dive on in because you know how I feel about time. I cherish people's time because that's the only thing we can't bottle and buy, right? So let us pray. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence tonight, Lord, not for our own pleasure, not for our own will, Lord God, but for your glory. Lord, we truly, I truly believe that someone's life is going to change tonight and that healing is going to take place, deliverance, Lord, because you said where the two and the three is gathered for your name's sake on one accord and you shall be in the midst. And Lord, we invite your presence in the midst of this broadcast tonight. We give you this broadcast, Lord. We give you this platform. What 
whatever you want to release tonight, Lord, release it. This is your platform, and we remove ourselves so you can get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a little <sighs> stage problem here. Okay. <laughs> hey, it happens. <laughs> I'm the poster child. I'm like, wait, Facebook won't let me be great. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> so, Pastor Butler, introduce yourself to us. We see you doing marvelous work. So, just tell us about you. Well, thank you so much. Well, let me start by saying thank you so much for this invitation to be on your show. I was so um, honored when you when you asked me, and, and I have this thing where I kind of always say yes, especially for <laughs> ministry stuff. So uh, it, it was really going to be a no brainer that I was going to jump right on uh, when this day came up, and I'm just so excited to be here. But as you mentioned, my name is Kyle uh, Kyle Butler, as a matter of fact, and uh, I live uh, currently in New Jersey, and I've I've traveled a little bit, and and I've pastored here now for a few years in this uh, nice. wonderful state of New Jersey. And I started off uh, quite a while ago, actually, at about the tender young age of about 26, I started pastoring. Wow. It was what? a church that uh, I had grown up in and um, the pastor was older and he decided it was time for him to move on. And and I, the, I guess the lots kind of fell on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he um, invested a lot teaching you, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. So I started off, uh, you know, at this young age of 26, I really didn't know anything. And I kind of, uh, I guess, kind of spun my wheels for many, many years, just kind of going through the motions. Uh, I, it, it really wasn't until about 2007 when I had this metamorphosis uh, and, and, and everything changed. So uh, the person that I was, although nice and I thought I was doing a really good job prior to 2007, I'm much, much different now, and, and I'm really happy for this because I really feel like now I have a message that can really help someone. It's just not a bunch of uh, what I call religious rhetoric, just uh, things we just say just to say. Just to so, say it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, which uh, we, we both know it doesn't really get us anywhere. It don't. It really don't. It really don't. But, you know, it's a good place. To, this is a good place to start. <laughs> yeah. Because you hit the yeah. nail right on <laughs> <laughs> you hit the nail right on the head. You said you're doing ministry and you're trying to figure it out. But when you get to that place, you kind of understood that there's a message. Tell me about that transition and about that message, because it's always a message that we got in part in us that we need to deliver. Right. So tell us about that. I'm, like, I'm so excited. <laughs> it, in the beginning, I, I thought I was a man of faith. You know, I'm a faith man. And from a little kid, mm -hmm. I was always fascinated by the topic of faith. It would always fascinate me. Every song that I would hear about faith, every time someone would mention the word faith, my mom, she would spend time with us as kids, and we would do this thing called devotion. Almost every night in the house, we would have some type of mini church service. She would, she would make us sing songs and She'd read us uh, Bible stories. And whenever she would read about David, maybe David and Goliath or Daniel and the lion's den, and whenever she would talk right. about faith, I would perk up. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd get real excited. <laughs> yeah. and that was probably the only time that I really paid attention when she was talking about faith. <laughs> so uh, I thought, you know, I was a man of faith. As a matter of fact, I did my first little trial sermon, as they call it. I was 13. And, of course, the topic was faith. Um, right. And I kind of went through most of my early years really – thinking and believing that I was a man of faith until one day the father said to me, son, you don't have any confidence in my word. And uh, I was really offended when he said that to me because <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I'm a pastor. I've been pastoring now for some years. I've been with you all this time. What do you mean? I don't have any confidence in your I don't word. have faith. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I tell you what, though. It, it, he's always right, you know. He, he's always right. You right. Know, he knows exactly what he's saying. And <laughs> always. It, it wasn't too long. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't too long after that that I realized he was right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any confidence in his word at all. Uh, and that that was in 2007 when that kind of all started. And it was shortly after that that he came to me and said, "Son, you have no idea how big my grace is." Wow. And I said, show me. And I was curious. Mm -hmm. And well, what do you mm -hmm. mean? Because at that point, 
all I knew Grace to be was this little, um, like, pat on the back, this little boost, this little push down the road, you know, how Paul was there, mm -hmm. and, he, and, and he, was, right. he had that situation, and, he, and, and the story tells us that he prayed about it three times, and he had gone before the Lord, and, 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 and his answer was from God, hey, my grace is sufficient, so right. every time I ever thought about grace and heard grace growing up in church, and even when I preached on that topic, it was more so just to say, hey, if you're having a rough time, if you're struggling with something, if God doesn't want to deal with it for you, then he'll give you some grace and that'll kind of carry yeah. you down the road, you know? Like coffee. I'm yeah, tired. Yeah, Drink yeah, some yeah, coffee. Little, little five-hour energy boost, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, so that was my understanding of grace right there. So when he said that, that's the only thing I could think of. And he wow. said, son, you have no idea how big my grace is. And let me tell you, he was right again. <laughs> <laughs> he was on point again. I had no idea how big it was. Wow. And so he began to teach me grace starting in 2008. And from that moment, uh, just to kind of fast forward to where I am today, uh, I like to say it this way. Uh, as he began to teach me grace, grace then introduced me to unconditional love. Oh, and, wow. and that's kind of where we are today, just just uh, becoming intimately, intimately connected and intimately uh, familiar with our father who is unconditional love. Wow. So tell me about grace, because uh, like you said, a lot of people look at it like a cup of coffee. They didn't get any sleep. I'm kind of tired today. Let me just go get me some coffee. <laughs> you know, let me just go get me some grace. <laughs> so what does it even mean for God's grace? What does that even mean? Well, it's, it's really the, 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 the quick answer. Grace is Jesus himself. That, that's the quick answer. You know, John chapter one tells us that the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So and we, we, we can see later on as we start to discover and the Holy Spirit begins to teach us just what this is all about. We see very quickly that Jesus is grace. As a matter of fact, when Paul picks up this topic in Ephesians chapter two, and you know, the famous verse that we all know, it says we're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, not of works. It's a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. So when we see it in that context, that this is something that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit prepared for us before the beginning of the world, before the yeah, foundation, right. as Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 1. And then he presents us this gift of grace. And another way I like to say it is, grace is where all of God's goodness is. It's in that gift of grace who is Jesus. And God says, here, this is my gift for you because wow. I love you so mm -hmm. much. Right. Amen. And unconditional love. Because I saw a post on your wall and it was about unconditional love. And I was like, wow, okay, that's powerful. So what is unconditional love? Because a lot of times when we're going through stuff, especially when we come short, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, don't worry. God, God <laughs> unconditional love. He love you anyway. You know, and a lot of times, especially for new, new, new believers, new to the faith, they're like, okay, that's nice and all, but am I still in trouble? <laughs> what does unconditional love even mean? <laughs> well, back to Ephesians chapter two, and Paul takes some time here. He's, he's at the later stages of his life. He's, he's in jail at this point, and he's writing back to this church. Word has gotten back to Paul that people are hearing the gospel message. And let me just say this real quick. The gospel message is not what we do for the Father, what we do for Jesus, what we do. The gospel message is what he's done for us. And often that mm -hmm. message gets so confused and so muddied that we don't even really understand what the gospel is. The proclamation right. is Jesus did this for us. It's a gift. Now here, it's for you. So as, as these people in, in the, uh, the church of Ephes uh, Ephesus, mm. they were hearing, Paul was hearing of their conversions, or in other words, people saying, hey, I, I like that message. I, I, I'm in, count me in, you know? And so <laughs> yeah, he begins to say to them, I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you because I need you to understand something. Now, remember, this is Paul at the tail end of his life. He's, he's gone through 
many, many experience. He's learned so much. First, he learned how to be a religious person. So he learned how to be religious. He learned that yeah, very, very that. well. Real he good. mastered <laughs> religion. Real he good. learned. Right? He did that very well. I mean, he knew the law inside and out. He knew these things so intimately. And he was proud of it. He boasted of his knowledge of this at one point. And then he has an encounter with grace on the road to Damascus. Grace, as he said, this great light shone around me and this voice spoke to me. And when that voice spoke, I knew who it was, even though he said, who are you? He knew who it was. He, it was undeniable. <laughs> yeah, so, we like to be slick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it wasn't too long after that that God began to take him because he said, uh, after this experience some years later, he said, no man has taught me. Jesus mm. taught me. He pulled me aside and he taught me. He gave me the revelation of grace and God's unconditional love. So anyway, we're here now. We're in Ephesians chapter two. And Paul is making this prayer for these people who once again said, count me in. I'm in. I, I want that. Right. right. And he says, right. there's something that I want you to know. There's something that you need to see your eyes of your understanding. They need to be enlightened. You need to become acutely and intimately aware of this one truth. And he says, in, I'm sorry, that's chapter one. In chapter two, he says this as he continues. He says that the eyes of your, well, I'm sorry, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that's the first part. Then he says that the God who is rich in mercy because of his great love in which he has loved us, Ephesians chapter two, verse four. That's the part that he wanted us to see and understand. In other words, Everything the Father has done, everything the Father is about, everything the mm. Father has given us is because of his unconditional love as he has loved us. We've heard it differently, much, much differently, as a matter of fact. Right. What we've heard is, let us prove our love for God. And if we prove God, our love for right. God good enough, maybe God will help us. Maybe Plus, God will bless right. us. Maybe God will come and deal with our situations if we can prove how much he loves us. And Paul says, no, 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 don't start there. Don't ever go there. Where you need to mm -hmm. be is on this truth, is that it's because of his great love, his love. in which he right. has loved us. And this great love, this agape love, is the epitome of unconditional love. It is love without any conditions whatsoever. Oftentimes, when I post about this unconditional love, people will say, well, you know, I, I, don't, I, you know, I hear what you're saying, but... Because we're looking at it from a human position and our humanity, as good as we love others, our love will always be somewhat conditional. It will just always will be. So if you upset me, all right, if you make me mad. Well, I might not love you today. Exactly. Exactly. My love is going to be. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> me speaking to you, me interacting with you, me choosing to be around you is going to be conditioned on, well, how well you treat me. Well, that's Pretty us much. in our humanity. That's not the Father, however. The Father so shows us here. Matter of fact, it goes back to Ephesians where it says, we were dead in our trespasses. We were dead, right? So mm -hmm. what can a dead person do? A dead person can do right. nothing. So nothing, that right. shows us that this had nothing to do with us do with or us. nothing to do with what we mm -hmm. had to do. This was the Father expressing his unconditional love for humanity saying i'm going to give you a gift that is so big so wonderful so great it's my son and he's going to show you just how good i am as a father wow you know i'm taking notes on a sticky pad because this is so good this is so good <laughs> i got a little sticky note <laughs> <laughs> and this is how I heard it. I heard first comes religion, you know, where we start out, we jump in yeah. that religion, and then comes grace. Because we get saved, we're like, yep, what's the rules? Give me the rule book, and I'm going to follow this yeah. rule book. <laughs> Down to it. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's what we what do. What you said, and that's yeah. it. And we just, bl just blinded, straight, blinders on. Here's the rules, this is the religion talking, and then here's comes grace. Yeah. Here comes grace yep. right after that and snatch us up. See, I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's why we have so much problems now. We see a lot of it in the news this week is because yeah. of that. I need to prove myself 
and my love to God. And well, not all the time I'm going to have that unconditional love. And when we get in that place is when we feel like, okay, well, maybe I'm not worthy. Maybe it's just not worth even doing. Maybe it's not even worth serving God. Maybe it's not even worth being alive because I would never be that person God need me to be. Right? right? Yeah. My yeah. God, that message yeah. there. Thank you, Lord. Unconditional love, guys. Unconditional love have nothing to do with us and everything nothing. to do with Jesus. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh God. Mm. And that's you know, amazing. When, when we start there, and I know we didn't start there, right? We started, as you said, we started on religion. It was what I call the classic bait and switch. So <laughs> before we said, you know what, I'm in, count me in, they they told right. us, you need Jesus. You need yeah. Jesus. He'll make your life better. He'll turn your or life around. you going to die. You know, exactly, <laughs> right? Or, or, you know, you need fire insurance. If you don't get this fire insurance, you're going to be a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we say, okay, you know what? We're scared. We're terrified or whatever it is. We say, okay, sign me right. up. And, and almost immediately, maybe the next week when we go back, right? We go back to church the next week. And what happens? They say, we want a refund. Yeah, give me that Jesus <laughs> back. We'll give you this rule book. <laughs> we, we know we told you you needed Jesus, but you know what? Give me him back. Take this rule book. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. But I'm just dying laughing because it's just so real and yep. so practical. Uh, that's real. It yeah. is a, a lot of times, a lot of people, we get scared. We hear that one sermon and it's either we're broken and we hear, okay, well, come and he can heal it. It's kind of like an ointment. Just put this ointment on that burn. You'll be all right. right. So, all right. Give me the ointment. And it don't, for us, it's not too fast. It's not right away. It's a process. Deliverance is process. We're like, all right, well, take your ointment back. <laughs> give me my money back. It's kind of like, <laughs> give me a refund. <laughs> Yeah. So you're dead on with that. It's like insurance. I'm gonna buy this insurance, but yeah, I might not insurance. need it next week. Yeah. When I'm really saved next week, you could just give me my money back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that's how we 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 viewed this. And because of such, it's left most of us, many of us, very, very confused. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we got on this 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 hamster wheel so to speak this merry-go-round and we've been doing and doing and doing and doing and doing and truthfully we don't feel any more connected we don't feel any more love right. we don't feel any more blessed we don't feel any more cherished or or loved or appreciated we don't feel any better because the 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 big issue with religion is this it'll always ask you for more yeah, I know you prayed yeah. all night long last night, but you got to do it again tonight. And the I, other night. I know you've been in church every Sunday for months on end, but you got to come this Sunday. If you don't come this one, you're going to miss it, you know? I, I know cool. that you've uh -huh. been fasting your, yourself silly, but you've got to keep <laughs> mm -hmm. that fast going. And religion will just say, give me more, wow. give me more, give me more, give me more. And we... Because we're in this performance mindset, we say, okay, more must mean better. So let's do more. Let's mm. continue. And we think, because our emotions are attached to it, we think that, okay, God is pleased with this. But there's something beautiful here. Jesus, before he did one single thing, before he did anything, I mean, he was fresh out of the water, okay? He was fresh <laughs> out of the water. He had just gotten baptized. That was it. And the voice... The Father speaks out of heaven and says, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased oh, right now. You would, think, oh, wow. you would think that the Father would have waited. Okay, if it's based oh, upon how feet. we think in our, in our performance mindset, the Father should have waited till after the cross and the resurrection. And then the Father wow. should have said, Oh, my son, I'm so pleased with you because you've done all mm -hmm. of this now. Three and a half years of ministry, saving, you know, healing people, raising people, delivering people. You've done all this. I am so proud of you. But no, it didn't go that way. Before Jesus did one thing, the Father oh. declares over him, I'm pleased with you. And you know what? That's the same exact voice that Father has spoken over us from day one, from the beginning. He's already well pleased with us. Wow. Wow. Mm. 
my god yes you know i literally i'm sitting here and i'm just in my, i'm just picturing it i'm like wow right out of the water so the minute we accept jesus as our lord and savior we already made the first step we are we are fresh out of the water we are right there at that place when he said okay well done you accepted jesus not go and build a ministry do everything and then in the end when you die i'm well pleased with you and that's the perception that's the religion perception yeah. you know just work as hard as you can and when you die you'll get a crown not the unconditional love and the grace and the mercy wow you know there this there is, is real there are some truth there's some truths here that we've not known because we weren't told what we've been told right. is that we're wretched we're useless, we're worthless, we're dirty, we're sinners, we're no good, God is mad at us, he's going to get us, we better get our act together. This is what we've heard. This is the message we've clung to. We've, we've embraced this message. It's, it, it, it's, it's caused us to drop our heads. It's caused us to walk in this darkness. And this darkness has pretty much taken us away from the truth of who we really are, who our Father says we are. The truth right. is, and the, the, you know, because we see this over and over again, especially Paul tells us this. He says in, in Ephesians chapter one, he says it some more in Colossians, but he says that in the beginning, before the foundations of the world, we were with the father in the son and the blessing, the declaration of his goodness was declared over us before we were born. So we were born blessed. We were born approved. Right. We were born into the love of the Father. This, you know, Solomon said this, and we know Solomon to be one of the wisest men, if not the wisest man to ever live. Right. He said this in the book of Ecclesiastics. He says, listen, I know a lot of stuff, but one thing <laughs> I, I know beyond doubt, beyond there's no confusion here. And he says, every man was born of right. Every man. But we have devised schemes in our minds that convince us otherwise. Wow. So when you when you think about what the father did, this is the this is intimate. This is the beginning. This is before all time, before we made our first breath. You know, he he. Right. Let, let me take you back to the garden. Here's the father. He's created the 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 earth, and and he now he's he's he comes he's in the earth. And now he's creating the elements of the earth. And he starts with the, you know, the skies and it gets to the waters and the mountains. And sometimes if you're driving out and you see the ocean, it's so beautiful. When you're, when you're driving out and you see mountains, it's so beautiful because that was the hand of God delicately and intimately designing every portion of everything he created. And then it was time for the animals, you know, Let's say, let's start with the cat family, with the lions. He, he said, okay, I want a lion. And he, he built the lion and he gave it its roar and he gave it its dominance and he gave it its claws and its teeth and every single precious element of the lion, he created it. And then he said, okay, tiger, you're next. And I mean, he was intimately wow. and passionately connected with creation as he was doing it and it was flowing out of his love. And then he says, now it's time for me to create the very thing that I am so giddy about, I am so excited about, I've been waiting for this moment. I've been waiting for this day because I'm about to create man and man is gonna be the recipi recipient of my great love. And it's like God at Christmas morning, he just couldn't wait, can you see it? As he's putting together Adam's arms and his legs and his feet and his toes and his eyes and his hair and his fingernails, I mean, his lines on his head, he's putting together every intimate part and every part that's coming together as God sees man forming. God is getting so excited. The sun is getting excited. The Holy Spirit is getting excited. And they're saying, oh my God, we just can't wait for him to open his eyes because when he does, when he does, we're finally going to have someone we can pour out all this great love on. And that's how it was. We came out of the Father from the beginning, an expression of his love. Wow. You know, that's true. 
That's true. And that's why he came and said it's not good for a man to be alone because every intimate details, he designed that. He force he foresee that, you know, and he gave us that. But somewhere along the line, we believe I don't need nothing and nobody back up, <laughs> including <Yeah>. God. <laughs> and, yeah. And we weren't designed like that. So, wow, that is, right. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Wow. You know, it's your ministry. Tell us about your ministry. How do we find your ministry? Tell us about your ministry because you're giving us, guys, you see all this good teaching we're getting right now. <laughs> so how do we find your ministry? Well, you can find me on Facebook, of course, Kyle Butler. You can also find me on YouTube. I have some teaching on YouTube and I'm adding more uh, weekly on YouTube. Uh, so it's Kyle Butler. Uh, you can find me on YouTube as well, just Kyle Butler, and you'll it'll be Grace Moments with Kyle Butler. You'll see me there. Um, I'm I'm almost finished with my website. You can actually go there now. It's KyleLButler.com, KyleLButler.com. You can go there as well. There's some content there. So you can reach me on Facebook. You can reach me on Twitter. You can reach me on Instagram, uh, all at Kyle Butler. You can reach me on YouTube, Kyle Butler, just my name, Kyle Butler, and and uh, just look for my picture. You'll, you'll see my picture pop up eventually. And there's my website, KyleLButler.com. You can, you can get some more information there. You can inbox me and, and all that good stuff. And we'll be happy to share so much more. There's, again, there's new content being added every week. Um, on Facebook, there's probably more on Facebook right now. There's a bunch of Grace Moment videos out there. And I love doing the Grace Moment videos. They're, they're you know, three to five minutes long. And they're just little tidbits of truth that help people see just how loved they are by our father and just right. what unconditional love and unlimited grace really, really looks like. We've been sold right. a, a very bad piece of land. You know, we, we got a really raw <laughs> deal here, really bad. And, and religion was the, the seller, you know, it, it sold us this lie and we bought it. We bought this lie that we were unloved and unwanted and we were so disconnected and God just hated us. We bought this lie. And let me tell you, even after, quote, salvation, most of us still believe that about our father, that he's mad at us, that he hates us, that he's disappointed with us. And mm -hmm. we never, ever come into a peace and a rest of who we are mm -hmm. based upon who he says we are. And that's the key. So I'm excited. And the reason why I do what I do, because I just want to tell people who you are who you, who you are, who our father says you are. And I want to get you away from everything that is a lie that you've been told that you are. Right, right. Because ultimately it's that lie that determines our mindset and determine yes. our quality of life. It determines everything. Yeah. Because if we can't believe that we're loved by him or we can't receive him, I mean, that's salvation. Yeah. <laughs> we can't receive the promise. Right. So it start yes, it start with that, and, I, and it's one thing I noticed a lot throughout the days and throughout the weeks, based on my job too, is a lot of people really truly just don't believe that they're lovable. Right. And the problem comes from, yeah, maybe you don't love me as much as you say, and then and then I kind of understood. Like, okay, God, I'm going to have a little bit of mercy on them because I know when I get in my my own way, <laughs> how God must be looking at me because I'm like, yes, I do. And I'm showing them and there's like, yeah, and they try to push your buttons to see how much you really do love them. And I said, that'd be us sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. That would be us sometimes with God. Like, maybe if I push your buttons long enough and hard enough, maybe I'll see that you really don't love me as much as you say you do. <laughs> My God. So unconditional love. Love is a big deal. It's a big deal. And a lot of people, especially yeah, with the whole... Go ahead. Yeah. It's, it is the deal. It's the deal of all deals. Just like grace is the deal. Grace is not a topic. It's not, you know, because uh, there's so many... Uh, churches, they, okay, today we're going to talk about, you know, to, how to tell the truth, or tomorrow we're going to talk about how to be a better giver, and next week we're going to talk right. about this, and then one, maybe one Sunday or two Sundays out the year, we're going to talk about grace, as if it's a topic. Grace is not right. a topic. Grace is the topic. It is the cream of the crop. <laughs> Unconditional love, unlimited grace, hand in hand, truth. This is what it's all about. 
And, you know, we, there, there's some truths here that I, it's important for us to understand. What do we want to do? What is, what is our goal here? We want to get you away from a worker's mentality into a resting position because that's really where we are. Paul tells right. us this. We're in a place of rest, but many of us just don't know it. I used to think that I'm going to work my tail off down here for the Lord, and I'm mm -hmm. going to get to heaven one day with an attitude. And I'm going to say, God, <laughs> I did all this work for you down here, yes. and my life didn't really get any better. And I want an explanation now. I want an explanation now. Why didn't my life get any better? I did all of this for you, and I was so prepared to give him that speech. I was ready. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he was going to get it, you know. Um, and, and, and until I realized, uh, ta-da, I wasn't supposed to be working to get or, or, or doing to be. I needed to come into the revelation that I already was and then rest in this truth. Rest in the truth. That just makes things so much easier, right, guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He loved me. <laughs> I'm going to love him back, and I'm going to rest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sounds so easy, but religion complicated. There were everybody's like, uh, you know, I don't even know where I begin and where I end, so I'm just right. done. I'm out. <laughs> I'll figure yeah. this thing out somehow. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> My God. And I know you have a program I saw. It's a... Forgive me if I miss the name of is it Grace Line? Yeah, Grace Line. Every Monday night, me and Pastor Lynn Bennett, uh, Bennett, Bennett. I'm sorry, geez, I always mess up his name. I'm terrible. Sometimes <laughs> I'm really bad with names, and he's my boy, and I always mess up his name. Bennett, Lynn Bennett, 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 Lynn Bennett. See, uh, we see, do it's a, a good line. thing you just talk about grace and unconditional love, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We were on a grace line together, and I messed up his name. And he looked at me like, bro, you don't know my name? <laughs> I don't know why I want to say Bennett. I don't know, but it's Bennett, Lynn Bennett, OK? Uh, we do a, a Monday uh, FaceTime Live called The Grace Line. And it's really just a, a show similar to this, where two people who love the topic of grace and God's unconditional love, and we just share from that position only. You know, there are so many things we as believers, people who have said, yes, yeah, sign me up, I want that. We should have right. never learned. We should have never learned so many of the things uh -huh. that we've learned. We should have never been entangled with so many of the things that we've been entangled with, but we did. And we didn't know any different until the Father uh -huh. and the Son and the Spirit begin to pull us aside and get our attention. And it took me some time to really hear the voice of the Father the way I hear it now. But that day he said to me, son, you have no idea how big my grace is. I knew that was him. I didn't know it was going to be such a critical life-changing moment as I've come to see it. But I'm so glad that I took a moment to say, show me. And that's the heart of the Father. As a matter of fact, Jesus in John chapter 17, this is another one knows I'm coming to the end moments, right? <laughs> this is Jesus. He's coming to the end of his time. He knows it. It's clear. He's aware and he's prepared. And so he makes a, a chapter 17 is so wonderful. One thing he says, he says, Father, in that day, that means there's a day coming that they will know that I am in you. You are in me and we are in them. So that day's coming, and that day's coming for everyone. We will all have that day moment where we'll realize how this all started, why it all started, how it all began, and the, the motive and the purpose behind it, which was our Father's unconditional love for us. But he doesn't stop there. He goes on towards the end of chapter 17, and he says, Father, I have made you known, and I will make you known. Jesus took personal responsibility over each and every one of us to make the father known to us all right wow and that's why we're here right that's why we're even here tonight mm -hmm. he did his job <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> what he came to do and graceline what's the number to graceline how did they tune into graceline how did they even find it well, it's on Facebook Live. So if you're friends, if you if you go to Facebook and you friend me, Kyle Butler, or you friend um, Lynn Bennett, 
Uh, you're one of us, we because we both do it together, so we tag each other. So just like this show, we're, we're, all of my friends see it, and all of his friends will be able to see it. So you'd have to connect with either Lynn or myself, Kyle Butler or Lynn Bennett, and friend one of us, and you'll be able to tap into the Grace Line every week. And it's really, really a fun show. We have a lot of fun. Sometimes we have guests come in, like, like you're doing with me. We have people come in and kind of go through the process, and we hear their stories. And so many stories are the same. I started in religion. I got burnt out. You know, <laughs> they lied to me. Throwing the towel, <laughs> <your> refund. <laughs> I was going down for the count. And then I found grace and oh my God, my life is changing. So that is happening. That narrative is happening for so many of us. So many of us are starting to see it. And I tell you what, these are very, very exciting times because the, you know, there's a, it's not a promise of doom and gloom and fire and, oh, my God, that's not the promise over the earth. The promise over the earth is that the entire earth will be filled with the glory of the Father. Hold on. Come on, Facebook. Hold on, guys. Let me get him back. Hold on. Facebook don't want us to be great, y'all. Hold on. Let me bring him back. He's coming back. See? Back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We're back. Yay! <laughs> I was like, <laughs> don't want us to be great, Facebook, but we here. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Because <laughs> it's freezing up. It froze, and then you went, like, in frozen mode. Let me uh, see. Yep. Okay. Yeah, okay, I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. see you, but it's a little cloudy. Or yeah, I could hear you, and you're stuck in that one place where you're not moving but I can hear you so we'll be good <laughs> okay okay cool cool okay we'll um, be good yeah good so guys I will post I will share the website with you guys on our pages so you guys can find it also I will be putting mom Butler on the gifted directory that can be found at elevation TV network.com underneath the gifted directory you will see him and you can link directly to his page so you can find him to connect with them they're gifted you know they're they're on the wall they're serving in a vineyard so that's why we bring them on we honor them and thank them for all the work that they're doing because their labor is not in vain and the best encouragement we can give them is just to let them know we hear it and we see what you're doing and share the video tag a friend you know they need to hear this so you guys can find him on the website you can find him on our page our page is facebook.com slash elevation sn and you can find his website on there i will link it to our page so you guys can find it directly so guys do you have any questions if you guys have any questions, post them now. If you're posting your questions after the playback, please do not post your personal business on Facebook comments. If it's something where you really need a direct answer, send it to the inbox. We will always reach out to you and give you your confidentiality. Don't post your personal stuff that you don't want the world to see in the comments. That's my disclaimer, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it okay so we'll reach out to you guys even if you post your comments after we're ended in the playbacks so guys any questions let me see if we have any questions yep and there is a comment that says took me to know true took me to know true when i visit your church in new jersey awesome so that's somebody that visits your church that's awesome see when you have people that can say they came to your church and you're talking and you're consistent then we know you're doing what god called you to do so amen. god bless you amen so guys no questions pastor butler is there anything else you want to share with us before we pray and close i just wanted to say Any thank you so much again. events projects okay can you hear me can you hear me? Hello? 
You still there? Yeah, it's so it's choppy though. It's so it's breaking up, but I can hear you. Hold on, let me okay. see if I can um. Let me see if I can switch this network. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, yeah, now you're completely frozen. Hold on, I'm going to get you right back. Hold on. All right, guys, let me get him on because I want us to be able to hear him. So, hold on. Let me bring him back on. I want okay, I can see you now. But I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, it's still a little, it's still grainy on your end. But if you can hear me, I guess that'll be good for now. Um, I think you were asking me, uh, did I have anything else I wanted to say before we end it? And um, I would just, I was just going to say thank you so much for what you're doing, and um, your heart and your passion to get the message out and. I thank God for this vehicle that you have that he's given you this idea for. And I just speak blessings over you and blessings over this network that it will continue to grow and expand and just really even go beyond your wildest dreams and imaginations. Whatever the father told you about this, when he placed it inside of you, whatever you saw from that beginning, whatever you've seen so far, I just want to encourage you to know that it's still so much smaller than what the father really has in store for this. So thank you so much for being such Amen. a blessing to the body and a blessing to me and a blessing to us all. And we just so appreciate you. And we just want to pour back into you blessings and, and for, for what you're doing and the passion in which you do it. It's so clear. It's so evident. It just comes out of you so easy, easily and effortlessly. It's just so, so wonderful. And I'm just so excited to be uh, connected and, and just to be part of what this is. And I'll, I'll never, ever forget this moment. And we'll look back and, you know, hopefully be able to fellowship some more. Amen. My God, thank you for just speaking that. Because <laughs> we get a little rough sometimes. So thank you. God bless you. So guys, if you don't have any more questions, we are going to pray and we are going to release because it's Saturday. We got to give him back to his family at some point. So <laughs> let us pray. Let us pray and we will close. Hold on. Let me get this connection under control because it's still a little fuzzy where I can't hear you. So oh, hold on. Okay. So I switched the network, so hopefully I can hear you now. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, perfect. Now it's stable. There we go. All right. <laughs> now, <laughs> Facebook going to let us be great. Well, at least it's letting us great for the prayer. <laughs> there you go. We're good. <laughs> okay. Do you want to pray us out? Yeah, I will. Would you mind? I sure okay. will. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for your great love that you have for us. Mm -hmm. Father, every single thing that you've done, every single thing that you provide, every single thing about who you are and about who we are comes effortlessly to us because of your great love in which you love us so much. And Father, thank you so much for giving us grace, unconditional grace, grace without limits, unlimited grace. Thank you so much for revealing to us through the spirit of truth, just who you are, who we are, and how this all works together. We are now starting to see the plan so much clearer. Thank you. Our eyes are enlightened. There's no more scales. And we're starting to understand how to trust you, what rest is all about. So I speak to everyone who will hear this video, everyone who will come in and just be part of this, that they too, Father, will come into a place of understanding your unconditional love, your unlimited grace, the truth about who you are, who we are, and how we all can come and should be resting in the beauty of your love and your grace. So we thank you so much, Dad, for this opportunity. We're looking forward to many, many more. Encourage, inspire, motivate your children who you love so much. We, we thank you and we bless you. 
as you have blessed us in your dear name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. So guys, thank you for watching. God bless you guys. And I pray that you guys was blessed as blessed as we were, that you guys were filled, that you guys just feel encouraged to go and use the gift that God has gifted you with. Not every gift is the same. So use yours because the word of God said your gift will make room for you. So when life hits you down, we don't quit. We elevate. There's elevation in it. So use it as elevation and motivation to push forward. So God bless you guys. And thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Bye guys. Bye Pastor. Bye -bye. Thank you again. Bye. Bye -bye. God bless you.